Hi. Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. I know I have a different background. Yes. I wanted to make sure I got this in for you before my busy day starts on Monday. So I'm actually recording this on Sunday evening. And so I wanted to make sure I got it in. So I'm all cozy, just sitting on my bed and doing this channeling video for you. So it's nice to see you today. We're going to actually have a afterlife conversation with one of our favorite guests. And that would be Freddie Mercury from the afterlife. Freddie is such a favorite because of the energy, such a bright, just hopeful, fun, um, very sweet, so kind, emotionally supportive energetic. So I could use that. Could you, especially as we're rounding out the end of January, 2023, and we're going to start leaning into February and February is a boost. It's got a different leveling of platform as far as energy goes, and it's going to need more attention. And if you've already felt like you've been a little ADD or ADHD or not knowing what's up or not having a lot of retention in the mind and the memory, you're not alone. A lot of people have said that in session. So I thought it was just me. It's not just me. If you think it's just you, it's not just you. You're not losing your mind. You are probably resorting information in your mind and focusing on a letting yourself have more downtime so you can just process without don't think so hard, don't hold on too tight, and don't try to control. Those are my pieces of advice and words of wisdom. Don't hold on to so tight. Don't try to control. Just, just really let yourself have downtime to process. Now, I say that, and of course, I'm like looking like, oops, working like a crazy woman. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? That just happened live. Okay. It's not a huge deal, right? It's just a little sticky. It just fell down. It's no big deal. No problem. Although it is a sacred geometry shape, so I kind of find that a little interesting. We got the, the dodecahedron, that vibe going on here. That's what this is, the sacred geometry shape. Do you see that? Interestingly, before we jump into our Freddie Mercury channeling, I'll just share a little bit about this sacred geometry shape in particular. I call it like the sacred soccer ball energy. And it's an, a visualization I would do um, when I worked with moms and kids from time to time to kind of help them imagine a bubble of light around them. I said, imagine the soccer ball, just really imagine stepping into a soccer ball, but having everything just be light, this grid of light around you. So it's really soft and really flowing and really moving and just kind of moves with you. And so the idea of the mom and the child kind of vibration or the parent and the child vibration in regards to the sacred soccer ball is because like the soccer ball is like the whole thing. Like for me with my kids, it was always soccer. It was always a big deal. And so I'm like, everybody knows what a soccer ball looks like. So let's use that. And then it kind of felt like this protective energetic for that relationship as it was forming, as it is evolving, as it is changing. So it just seemed like a good kind of relationship container, let's just say. So that sacred soccer ball might be coming forward to for you, my friend, in this session in particular, to help you use that as the empathic self that you are to hold your safe and sacred space. Okay. Yeah, that's so how we're gonna step in with Mr. Freddie Mercury. Can you come on in here, honey? I would love to see you. Oh, come on, come on. Oh gosh. Energetically, I feel the spirit essence. So I just if I close my eyes, I literally feel like it's a friend hugging me. I love that. So I want you to feel that too. Breathe in that energy of light, that supportive structure. Feel the essence of spirit. You don't have to be me to do that. You don't have to be a psychic to do that. You're an empath. You feel. So feel. Just breathe in. Feel that energy coming right in. It comes in from my left side into the heart space and kind of moves up. And it kind of looks like a big smiley face or a half moon shape. Kind of holding us together like a boat of love. Freddie Mercury coming from the afterlife to have a conversation with us. Freddie has a playlist. So if you love Freddie Mercury stuff, go ahead and listen to that. Honey, I asked to channel you today. Or I thought about channeling you because it's just so much has been going on. And I just couldn't try to do a new person right now. I just, I want somebody that knows me and feels my vibe. You know, I just want a friend right now in the afterlife to just have conversation with me. Can you do that? 
Can you do that with us right now, for us right now? Because I know there are people that are here that are listening that really, really just need that kind of chill vibe of an old friend. Can you do that for us? Yeah, he's, yeah. we'll get the cats. He says, let me get the cats. <laughs> okay, wait though. Cats in the afterlife? Yeah, I'm probably not allergic to them. <laughs> It's a thing, you guys. I'm allergic to cats. Like, cats aren't a thing for me. How very Egyptian of you, Freddie. He says, divine feminine. You like the divine feminine, right? Like, you like the queen energy of the divine feminine. And he's like, yes, of course I do. He's showing me chocolate chip cookies. I don't know what that's about. Did he like, did you like chocolate chip cookies? Why is he showing me chocolate chip cookies? Oh, Okay. If you know, put in the comments below, but I'm going to tell you my take on it, okay? Because remember, when we are doing channeling sessions, you need to practice. Viewers, you need to practice, okay? Feeling the energy for yourself, learning how to receive information, information and just bits of messages. Just a word might trigger for you in a positive way, in a supportive way. He might bring in a message that feels like it's directly for you because it is. So receive it. Don't talk yourself out of it. Receive it for free, okay? All right, so practice. The chocolate chip thing is a reference to me. Used, I used to eat chocolate chip cookies all the time. Really good kind, the kind at the little grocery store because they were kind of soft. Now they're hard. Like they're hit or miss. They're not consistent. Whoever's baking them is not doing the job that I, used to happen before. And now they're kind of frozen sometimes. They're just not that good. And I know they're not gluten-free, you guys, I know. And I'm a gluten-free person by choice. But gluten-free is a thing, I know. But they they were good. I haven't had them for a long time. And then they changed the name of them to gourmet cookies. And then they just got chunkier and drier. So I haven't had chocolate chip, a really good chocolate chip cookie for a long time. But that vibration is home and comforting for me. So what kind of vibration is home and comforting for you? So this is what Freddie is bringing in. This is what afterlife celebrity guests bring in. Real human stuff for us so we can relate. Freddie comes in lots of red energy. He looks like he actually has a cape on, which is kind of interesting. Uh, like a pashmina, actually. He says pashmina because it kind of is a long scarfy thing. It kind of goes over his shoulder and it's, it's fancy. He says it's soft. It's like a blanket. It's like a blanket. It's soft. He says, we're going to talk about comfort. I'm like, okay, we're going to talk about comfort. You're going to bring in comforting energy. Thank you, because you know what? I could use that. Uh, I stretched my legs out here. I've been standing on my feet in the coffee shop. And oh, woo. Yeah, it gets on. It wears on your knees. Yeah, you didn't get that old, Freddie. You don't. You don't have to worry about that. You didn't have those kinds of experiences because you didn't get that old. Unfortunately, mm. yeah. So, what do you miss, like about being a person? He says it is very sensory. Sensory. He says you're right. You're right. So, my next piece in my head was going, well, you know, it's so sensory. And he says, yes, it is very sensory which now the new buzzword is somatic. So you can feel it in your body. You know, you can receive that information, that knowing that wisdom, intuition in your body. You get so much information intuitively in your body. You got to pay attention. Okay. Don't discount it. Don't tell it to shut up. Pay attention. He says, it's really sensory. He says that part, you know, like smelling the flowers and that kind of thing. He says, you know, like when you bake something, it's like fresh baked bread like that. He said like that. And it's not just like the smell of things. It's the, the way something makes you feel, you know, he says, it's like, like really good music. He says, it doesn't even have to have lyrics because he says, your mind, if you're really allowing your body to feel the music, your mind will bring in whatever kind of information needs to come in to meet the vibration of the music, the rhythm. He says, so it doesn't even have to be a song without, with lyrics on it. Just, just music, just music. And he says, piano. 
really likes the piano, just the sound he says of the piano, just that. And like, he's literally showing me like a glass of cognac and piano playing. And I'm like, what is that? That is strange. But that's what he's showing me, you know, that energy. And it kind of feels really mellow and really chill. And he says, that's comforting, you know, sitting by the fire with a glass of wine or, you know, and playing the piano. And he's saying, it's just that for me, that the sensory, he says, the the feeling of that, it's like ambiance, you guys, you know, but it's like the energy of it, you know, it, it means something. It's not just the symbolism of the the imagery of the fire and the the the, the thickness of the the, the red wine or whatever you're drinking and, and, or the warmth of the, the hot chocolate or whatever it is you're drinking. And then the piano, and he says, and the, the smoothness of the piano, you know, the top of the piano, how it's just beautifully black lacquered and just smooth. And, and he says, it's just, and when you touch the keys, he says, it just echoes just a little bit. It's sort of, vibrates through and if you do it really soft he says it's very very peaceful very calming freddie when i think of you i don't really think of calming you know i really don't i think a lot of us think of fun and the energy that you had and you brought to your performances to your concerts to your music but i i suppose downtime is really essential he says oh especially now. He says, especially now, right now, he says, there's a lot of demand, he says, on people to perform in your lives, you know, to be there for your family, your jobs, and all the things that you have to be there for. And he says, um, I consider myself lucky, Freddie says, I consider myself lucky. I didn't, I didn't have all those other distractions. I just had my career, my music, I just, I had that. And it had a whole life of its own, whole life of its own. And he says, so in a way it was my only relationship. He said, my only soul, he says, my only monogamous relationship was with my music. <laughs> of course, leave it to Freddie to talk about. We're going to use the word romance just so that YouTube doesn't flag this as a 18 and above that uh video <laughs> romance well you know february is coming up and we usually do a group for you with your people for that that people can sign up for and just do a small group with you i will host it and they'll do a small group so maybe should we do that again this year we do it around valentine's day would you like to do that again he says if you want to he said if you're up to it and he's asking me if you're up to it like, well, yeah, we've kind of started that. It's been kind of a tradition. And then we'll donate some of the money to a nonprofit or charity. Um, we've donated to a um, rescue, uh, animal rescue organization one of the years. Um, another year we donated to GLISTEN, which is for the LGBTQ plus IA community to kids and schools for programs for kids and schools. Um, yeah, so I have to think about this year. I have a really, yeah, I know. <laughs> I have a really big birthday coming up. And so um, maybe I'll have to give consideration to that or something maybe related to that that I'd like to do. Is that cool with you? He says, absolutely. Yeah, do whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want to do. So I'll do that so you can watch for that. Um, it won't be, I probably won't be up on this video right away because I have other stuff going on. But uh Probably by the first, I'll try to post it. Okay, you guys, on my Bridget Inspired on Facebook or Above Life channel on Facebook, or I'll post it on the community tab at Above Life channel as well. Okay. All right. So, Fred, can you give us any kind of insights? This is the first time I've talked to you about in this new year of 2023. Do you have any kind of insights since it's still technically January? Can you do some kind of fun psychic stuff for us? Any projections for the year? Any predictions for the year? Um, I don't know what he's showing me. I don't understand what you're showing me. It's like he's showing me two men and looks like they're married. Um, but he's flashing back to the 70s. 
They're holding hands. Maybe they're protesting or walking somewhere, like in a parade or protesting. Are you um, thinking about advocacy or is this a historic thing? Oh, oh. okay. All right, so um, I did read a book recently about Stonewall and the Stonewall riots. The riot, riot, riots, riot. Um, in New York. Yeah, I read that in the late 60s and I read a story about that. And so that's kind of the vibe I'm getting is that how things are, how things changed then. Like um, people didn't realize what a big deal it was as it was happening as it started to unfold and then all of a sudden it kind of took on a momentum of its own, that historic event that then changed things for gay rights. And um, basically where people who were in the gay community just started to say, no, enough is enough. We're human, we're human. Don't be treating us any different. Why would you treat us any differently? It doesn't even make sense. And so when I ask about 2023, he brings that imagery forward. So what that feels like to me is that times are changing again. And I hope they're going to change for the better, that people will be more advocacy-based and advocacy-focused. However, we have seen, you know, in current events, things have been really um, very separate. And so, I mean, that can be a concern for many people, of course, 100% a concern and not a lot of collaboration or anything like that, um, unfortunately. So are you saying that there's going to be something specifically related to gay rights? Or are you saying that it's some kind of, he says, just humans in general. He said there's going to be more obvious, um, dis, what is the word you're using? Dis, discord. Thank you. I couldn't understand. I'm like, what are you saying? Um, there's going to be more obvious discord. And so things that are seen to be what some people consider moral issues um, will be much more um, obvious. Like you will start to see what sides of issues people are on. It'll be more, I don't, I hate the word divisive. So we're going to say more discord, um, but it doesn't mean you have to fight or argue against anything. What you're really doing is speaking up for what you believe in and what you hope the world would offer and and be open-minded and open-hearted to not fighting against somebody else doing something or not doing something that's the key you got to really feel into the energy and like like the two men holding hands walking down the street like that that's not a protest that's a living by example that is loving that is not a threat to the heterosexual marriage of the people that are walking past them. Do you know what I mean? It's not. And so it's like that, that just be yourself and be a living example of what you believe. And that is 2023, according to Freddie Mercury. But he's going to, he's going to say again, it's, it's, there's discord. There's discord. He says, this is your discord. He says, don't give up though. He says, don't get, don't feel so dissatisfied that you just don't want to do any, like, don't let it just, it's like, don't let it take you down. Don't let it take you out. Just recognize that people are just really unsure of themselves. And this is a time of sorting out themselves. And so when they do that, sometimes they lash out to other people when they're really having trouble inside. He says, I'm not saying everybody's gay. That's not what I'm saying. Because I kind of was like, what are you saying exactly? <laughs> He's like, I'm not saying everybody's gay. But he says, there's a lot of inner turmoil. He says, you understand that? I do for sure. Because I've seen it a lot in session. There's a lot of inner questioning. And then there's this like, um, not really trusting yourself. It's getting really bad. Like people are really not trusting themselves. They're like, wait, wait a minute. Who am I? And it's not just this like exploration of, well, who am I? Let me ask these big philosophical questions. It's more like, what the hell? Who am I? Why is this happening? What is wrong here? And it's like, is it me? And that's the common question that people keep asking. Is it me? Is it me? 
is this mine? Is this me? And the answer to that question is no. The way you react or respond to the information that you see, observe, or are given is insight into who you are, as in what works for you and what doesn't. Like he says, the reason why you get so upset and disrupted, I'm going to say dysregulated, by information, the way you, the reason why you get so disrupted, he says, and I say dysregulated by information is because it doesn't, it's not in alignment with you. And that maybe doesn't mean the information is the problem or, and it doesn't mean that you're the problem. What it means is this is an opportunity to kind of work through things inside of yourself to just figure out what is this, what kind of, what does this mean for me? right here, right now. What does this mean for me? And oftentimes he's saying there's a host of other questions that come with it. He's saying there's more questions and that's the point. He said, that's a point. You should be asking yourself questions, but you shouldn't be getting hard on yourself and down on yourself and feeling depressed. He says, and depleted. That doesn't help anybody. Don't give like that. Don't do that. Don't try to do everything by yourself and blame yourself. And if something feels bad, it's because you are bad. He's like, that's not what, that's not even true. That's not even it. You're missing. He's like, you're missing the point. So like 2023, the vibe that Freddie's giving me is that it's an opportunity for us to recognize that we have a lot of internal turmoil. We have a ton of it. And it's expressing outward in all of our relationships and our circumstances on the global stage and our politics everywhere. It's expressing everywhere. People are channeling their inner dissatisfaction into the public arena. That's what Freddie's saying. And it's affecting people's lives. So before you go shooting off your mouth and acting a fool about somebody else's life situation, maybe you should look at your own life situation, get yourself into alignment in a way that isn't judging yourself or anybody else, but is giving yourself that permission to ask more questions, to explore. He's like, get curious, get curious, ask yourself questions but not come, like, don't be an asshole, he says. Don't be an asshole to yourself. Because when you're an asshole inside, you're an asshole to everybody else. So when you're hard on yourself, you're hard on everybody else. He's like, it all is the same. It's the same. The way you treat other people is how you're treating yourself inside. And that's why we, everybody can tell, he says, everybody can tell if you're not happy. Because you express that. Like, you, you show it. It's no secret you're miserable on the inside. Everybody knows it by the way you treat people, the way you act. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows. So do something with that information. Do something with it. He says, you know, people could stand to be a lot nicer to each other, he says. But I don't think that's going to happen, he says, in 2023. It's much more a time of this discord and this awareness of, of, inside our inner turmoil. And so your job is to focus on that and then do things outside that in, that that are giving you room to grow and learn and evolve and also to have compassion for yourself as you're doing new things. Don't get so hard on yourself. Focus on the process of being open and evolving and then give other people that same courtesy, that same energy. He's like, you can't be one way with yourself and another way with other people. That's fake. That doesn't work. People know that. People know you're fake. He says, everybody reads energy. They say, yeah, I don't really like that guy's vibe. You know, people, he says, people know. It's no secret. Everybody's like Bridget says, an empath. Everybody's that. He says, it's no secret. It's not, it's not shocking. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, honey. That was great. Yeah. I, now I want some chocolate chip cookies, but I think I have to actually go eat dinner here. I did pop it in the oven right before I came down to do this. So I should probably wrap it up with you. So to recap, Freddie gave us some info about 2023. Thank you very much. That was lovely. And the energy support for empaths. I hope you guys have been able to feel his energy as we've been connecting here. And if you love cats or the animals, tapping into the cats because they were present here during this conversation with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife, you know, here on Above Life Channel, I chat. It's conversation style. It's not an informative interview, an in-depth interview. This is not Barbara Walters having a conversation or interview. This is me. 
just like you, to give you the opportunity to practice and to connect and to feel because that's what's going to help you be more successful in life. That's what's going to help you be happier. That's going to help you feel more fulfilled. And it's going to give you some comfort during these challenging times that we have. Find moments of that. That's what Freddie talked about, comfort. He talked about that in his beautiful pashmina scarf, that soft, silky scarf, warm and cozy, but soft and silky, that beautiful red energy of that grounded root chakra. Hey, thank you for being here on Above Life Channel. I appreciate you. I, I surely do. I hope that we, Freddie and I, have inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope and encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Don't forget to watch Bridget Inspired on Facebook and Above Life Channel on Facebook because I will share the opportunity to do the private group session. It's a reading. It's a private group reading um, with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. And there is, it's a service. It is a service. That is the thing. The one thing I do charge for is that small group work. And then we donate some of the money to a charity. Yeah. So I'll post it on Above Life channel on YouTube on the community tab as soon as I put it up and then uh, Bridget Inspired on Facebook and Above Life Channel also on Facebook. You can also find me on other social media platforms. Um, I am on Instagram, Bridget Inspired and Instagram Above Life Channel as well. And if you want to book session or private session with me, I do not channel celebrities in the afterlife for private session. No, I'm an intuitive and a life coach and I work with you in private session work to empower you and inspire you. And yeah, we do some psychic stuff, but it's not answers, it's options. You show up and we have a great conversation with you know all the cool psychic perks that come along with that. The links to schedule personal private session with me are in the description below. Thanks for watching.